Hi guys, uh, I'm Sergio Stuart from Ole Newspaper. This question is for, for you, Mr. Foster. Uh, well, Pumas beat All Blacks twice. In the old days, we never thought that this can be uh, happen. But today, Pumas, for me, are the underdogs. You are the favorites. Uh, I want to know how, uh, what is your opinion about the, the Argentinian team, and if you, I don't, I don't know that uh, you don't want to this happen. If you think that Pumas can beat the All Blacks, <laughs> well, there are two teams in a semi-final. Anyone can win, so that's the that's the first mindset that both teams have probably got. Um, so. Look, we're massively respectful of, of Argentina. We, we know that they've had a great tournament. We don't sort of we don't sort of live in the past too much in terms of past results because World Cup tournaments are really are about the the present, and I really believe that. You know, it's about the best team on the night, and um, and if you go in with, into into a World Cup semi final with any expectation that the past is going to just happen again, then it's uh, then you are going to you're going to be in problems. So, look, we're just excited about being there ourselves. Um, we've been impressed with Argentina how they've carried their campaign. I thought it was a great a great victory against Wales where they showed their tenacity and and we know that they've got that because we play them regularly and, and they've always been a difficult opponent. So um, there'll be no surprises. Um, question for Anton, you're obviously there in, in 2019 and that squad and a lot's been made of that semi-final and, and how it unfolded. I was just wondering, could you give us an insight into the role of the leadership group this week and, and how vital they've been in, I suppose, uh, what happened in 2019 and helping, I suppose, ensure that doesn't happen again? <clears throat> yeah, I guess, you know... From 2019, um, I guess from that experience, you, you learn a lot, um, and um, it's clear that we've got some outstanding leaders in the team, and pretty much all of them were there. Um, and I know that that sort of loss is, is driving some of them. So yeah, I guess I'm um, at the at the World Cup experience is, is key. Um, I know it's four years on, but you can still look back to that week and, and think about what you learnt, learnt from it and, I guess, um, make sure that, yeah, it, it doesn't happen again and, and you get this week right. Um, for coach, please, uh, Pierrick for Varmetin. Um, with Pablo Matera injury, uh, Facundo Isa came back in the team for Argentina, and the, the game plan changed a bit. Why is uh, Facundo Isa a danger in your mind? Because he's a good player. He looks fit, powerful, and um, you know he, he brings a. You know they've got a lot of damaging ball ball carriers, and, and he's probably at the top of the tree. So. Uh, Pretty simple, you know, he's a good player. Hi, good morning. A question for um, Ian Foster. Uh, after such a big match against Ireland, especially from the physical point of view, are you expecting a, a different kind of match, maybe, against Argentina? Thank you. Uh, look, it's different because I've got different jerseys on. Um, it's not different from a physical side. And, um, you know, I think the, the good thing about this game is that, you know, we both know how, how tough each other, uh, each other is. And they're, they're a very physical, combative team, particularly at the breakdown and, and particularly the way that they tackle. And so, you know, you look at the likes of Kremer and he's had a great tournament. And so it's, it's a little bit of the same from, from what we had in the quarterfinal. And... So, you know, we're not going in with any different mindset in that space. And so the, the moral of the story is that it's a, it's a semi-final. We're playing a team that's, um, that, that we know will, 
will scrap and fight for every little bit of, bit of possession, and, and we're going to have to be at our best. We go in the middle <clears throat> and then in the back. Uh, tēnā tata. Um, I've just got a part of some questions for um, Ann Foster. Given the yellow cards in the last match, how important is the discipline in the next match, and how do you prepare for that? Yeah, nice question. Oh, I think it's it's always critical. Um, we were disappointed with um, one thing we didn't want to do against Ireland is get yellow cards, and we got two of them, and um, and one we felt was pretty debatable, and and one was fair enough in the circumstances. So, um, but again, it's a constant. You know, the you've just got to really work hard at that. I think our our discipline and accuracy um, has improved consistently through this tournament. And um, and and I felt that we had a really disciplined performance again against Ireland. And so I know we had a couple of yellow cards, but for a majority of that game, I, I, I felt we actually were very much in control of how everything everything we did. So we just got to take the confidence from that and expand it out a few more minutes. Ian, uh, up the back, uh, Dan Carter was at training yesterday. I know you brought in former players throughout the season. Do Does someone like Dan actually sit down and speak to the team or is it more informal? Uh, really informal yesterday. It was just, you know, I know he touched base with a few players, but it's really about having him there. You know, we've we've we brought a, a number of them in, as you know, before this tournament. Um, we've been privileged enough to have some of them around during the tournament and um, and the team love it and I, know I love it because they've got a rich history of, of loving this jersey and, and what the jersey stands for and they've got a great way of transferring that on to, onto this current group and often it's not done with words. Sometimes it's just about being there. We couldn't get too close to Dan because he had a nice cream French jacket on that meant none of us could hug him because we were all dirty so he was pretty protective about getting that dirty too so um, we kept our distance but no it was great having him in. Merci. Question for Jan. Uh, prior to the Irish game Jan <laughs> on your left <laughs> yeah. Sorry. prior Sorry, to Karen. the Irish game the, you said it's a final and the narrative for all the boys was it's a final is it still a final versus Argentina or last step <clears throat> to a final no it's a final it's um it's definitely a final and the 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 concept of of uh, no tomorrow in the in the last game we had is exactly the same this one and so you know the we, we know on on a schedule there is another game for the teams that don't win the semi-final but our mindset, and I'm sure Argentina's is the same, which is they just want to give everything they got this week, and it's all about this week, and and that's that's how we keep things nice and simple in our mind. And Anton, um, there's been a pretty consistent message from Ian and the coaches this week around the need to reset after such an emotional. Uh, occasion against Ireland in practical terms as players how, how have you gone about doing that how have you gone about kind of I guess physically resetting and, and more importantly mentally resetting for this game <clears throat> yeah I guess no doubt um, it was a special one last Saturday um, but you know at, at the end of the day we didn't come here to beat Ireland in the quarterfinals you know we come here to win the World Cup and we enjoyed that night. Mm. We enjoyed Sunday and then got back to work on Monday. And, you know, Foz has talked about it a lot. Um, Bert and Oka, our mental skills coaches, just about getting reset and getting back into the right mindset. And, um, yeah, I think we did that from Monday onwards because um, we know the challenge ahead uh, tomorrow. Uh, we've got to go again. And... And like I said before, we're here to, to win World Cup and, and tomorrow is another step to do that. Let me know, please. You'll 
get one soon, Damien. <laughs> <laughs> but not this time. Um, <laughs> Ian, there's been a lot of talk about 2019 fueling some of the players that were there, but what's been your message over the last week and leading into this week to the players that are at their first World Cup and about what knockout rugby is all about at in, in, in a World Cup? Yeah, can I just say is that most of the talk about 2019, we covered off in about that amount of time. And um, it, it, it's not lingering in our, in our mind. It's because you, you take the lessons at the time and then you apply the lessons. And so I, I think most of the lessons we've got out of 2019 are... Uh, have been taken on board. I think that, um, yes, we, we, we make sure we, we go back and revisit, OK, well, what, what were the keys? We've, we've done that. But th- this group, where I'm really proud of this group right now is that they're just, they're just loving being here where they're at right now. And, um, and they've shown, I think the hardest thing to do in professional sport is to, is to stay in the now is to actually be present where you're at and just to nail the thing in front of you because there's so much so much talk about the past and talk about the future and the hardest thing is to not not allow yourself to get distracted by those two conversations but just to be the best you can be right now and and we're working hard at that and that's the coaching group as well management team and so um, I'm incredibly proud of the way the players are dealing dealing with that, and they're not getting distracted by getting too confused about lessons from the past. Because um, this group right now, it's got its own way of doing things, and um, and so there's a lot of honesty within the group, and a lot of they're preparing really well, and we want to get tested tomorrow night, and we will be, and we just want to show that we can. We can just deal with the challenges in front of us one at a time and just keep growing as a group, and that's the goal. Uh, Damien, your luck's in. Um, <laughs> can you be kind enough, please, to elaborate just in the comments Ian made about Dan Carter joining training and um, what input he had with you? And also further to that, just how pace, pulsating it was for you also when you're on the bench last week and you didn't quite get on the field. Yeah, I think um, if I was mentioned, obviously we've had them in throughout the year and um, obviously they've had a little bit to do with, I guess, the things we've done throughout the year. And I think it, the big thing is just their presence throughout their environment. Um, especially with Dizzy, he's helped us a lot, particularly our, us kickers. Um, throughout the year, but yeah, I think it's just their presence being there, and um, obviously they've got a lot of experience and they're legends of uh, the All Blacks jerseys. So um, just to have them in and about the environment is great. Um, and then obviously the role on the bench last weekend it was uh, yeah, it was pretty nerve wracking to, to say the least. But um, obviously yeah, my my role as a bench player is to come on and, and make an impact when I can, and um, whenever. I'm required to do that. I, I'll do that. Um, and last weekend, obviously, my role was on the on the bench. Didn't get on, but that's as a team, you you do what you need to do for the team, um, whether it's on the field or off the field. So, um, yeah, if I get an opportunity this weekend to get on the field, obviously make the most of it. Um, but it's just a great feeling from last weekend. You could definitely show there's a lot of care in that whole for 80 minutes, particularly in that last five minutes. So, to be a part of that victory. Whether you're in the 23 or not is um, is really exciting. Um, Damien, four years ago you obviously weren't here through injury, and then, like you say, last week you didn't get on. Is there almost a sense of making up for lost time if you were to get on this week? Uh, not at all. Uh, like I said, I, my my role is uh, on the bench is to, to come on and make an impact where I can, and I know what I'm capable of doing there and. Um, it's definitely not about coming on to to prove a point or make up for that lost time. It's about getting on and just nailing my role within the team. Um, usually that's to try and speed the game up most times or um, be cool-headed when I can be. So, yeah, my role as a bench player is to come on and just do my job for the team, not to do anything special, um, play freely and, uh, and nail my role. Yeah, I'm definitely not getting out there to try and prove a point whatsoever. I'll take two last questions in the middle and then on the side. 
cut by uh, DMAC, Anton. There's questions for both of you. Um, lots of talk on, about the crowd disrespecting the haka. What's your thoughts about that? Can you even hear them? And what does the 24, uh, the next 24 hours look like for you guys personally if you guys prep for the game? Have you guys got any rituals or anything like that? Yeah, the, the haka was... It was um it was loud for sure, but I guess we can't control the crowd. They, they, they do what they want. And for us, it's about just expressing ourselves and through the haka. And I think we did did that really well. And in terms of rituals, uh, not too many rituals. Probably a bit of cards tonight, a fair bit of chocolate, a uh, bit of, and then tomorrow it's just sort of chill out throughout the day. Nine o'clock kickoffs, quite a obviously a late kickoff, so it's just about, um, yeah. Not getting too keen too early, um, just enjoying the day and then and then looking forward to getting into it later tomorrow night. Yeah, I think Damo covered off the hook a bit, um, and then very similar. I'll play uh, Damo in 500 tonight. Hopefully, I uh, get the W and then enjoy tomorrow. Obviously, late kickoff, so you have a lot of time in the morning, catch up with family and, and my partner, and and then we're into it. Oh, I don't touch the chocolate, by the way. <laughs> a question for all three, please. Uh, how, how important is the Hardy Savera in the whole black uh, locker, please? So, who asked that question? Yes. Okay, thank you. Yeah. How, uh, how is important is the Hardy Savera in the locker of a uh, all black? Uh, Look, he's a he's a, we we love Artie. He's a special player, um, but he's part of our group. He's got a role within our group, um, and he he's a leader. And we love it when when he expresses himself. But he'd be the first to admit that he expresses he can express himself when when our group is functioning at the level that enables him to do that. So, look, he's a he's a. He's a special man. He does some great things on the rugby park, um, but he's part of a group that uh, is excited about expressing ourselves. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. <clears throat>